We are at the end of the 2013-2014 school year. That's not only cause for celebration for our high school graduates and all of our students moving on to the next grade level, but it's also a time to look back and reflect on our accomplishments as a district. This is the State of the District Address and for the next 30 minutes, we'll be taking you through a year-end review as we focus most of our time on five important areas. They include the safety and security of our schools, student achievement, the district's financial stability, our district image, and finally, our competitive sports and UIL goals and accomplishments. It's always easier to move forward when we can look back and reflect on the things that got us where we are today. Let's start with the safety and security of our students. No matter how well we can prepare our students for college and careers, what often matters the most is that they learn in a safe and secure environment. What we see on TV happening a lot nowadays is the violence that occurs and what immediately goes through my mind when I see something like this is what can we do to help our children and keep them safe in our schools. So immediately we start, I, st I start to take a look at what we can do. We can bring in additional speakers, we can address the social emotional aspect of our children, we can identify the what, what problems that they're having so that we can go ahead and have them focus on what they're here to do and that's to learn. During the summer months of this school year, district administrators, security guards and some teachers attended workshops that taught valuable lessons on crisis and energy management. They learned from presenters that were trained in areas like handling aggressive confrontations, subduing or negotiating through tense and destructive situations. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. Bullying was among the top issues discussed among counselors where legal advice was presented, questions answered about the differences between bullying and teasing, and helpful brochures and videos were shared. Our counselors have been provided with the necessary curriculum to educate all students about bullying and the consequences of such behavior. Counselors have been taught how to work closely with the victims and perpetrators. No, no, no. We were proud to feature the efforts of students from Central Middle School that created a student-driven anti-bullying society. Many of the members were victims themselves. The reason why I'm in the No Bully Society is because I was bullied before and I also see other people be bullied every single day in the halls, not even in school. It could also be outside of school. I've seen it everywhere and I thought if I'm in this club, maybe we could prevent it more. We want them in our schools so that we can continue to instruct them and help them to learn. The district also met with local police, judges, constable and sheriff's office and hosted a first ever community partnership to discuss truancy issues and how to handle students that skip school for long periods of time. This meeting brought important decision makers to the table and helped establish a direct level of communication between each entity. Emphasis was placed on finding ways of improving our community and keeping our students in school. The question at the base of the meeting was, how can the partnership between the City of Westlaco and the school district help our students become more successful? And that's why the collaboration is extremely important. Many important decisions were made during this past year's summer training, one that includes the increase of security cameras throughout all district facilities. Since then, staff from our technology department and safety and security departments have been evaluating campus needs for placing cameras in strategic places, and most recently, our school board officials approved a $1 million budget for protective fencing and cameras around campuses like Ibarra Elementary and Westlaco High School. Most of our schools have adopted security measures at their front offices to keep harmful people out and a healthy and positive learning environment in. Let's move on to the subject of student achievement. We have a lot to talk about when it comes to the successes of our students and teachers, but to help us understand where we are today, we have to go back to the story of the train. It's like an old train. Very large and made of heavy steel emitting large clouds of smoke, requiring coal to help power the engine. And then you have this steam engine going into a tunnel, which is a tunnel that's completely pitch black. Well, that's a transitional phase that we're going to. But then all of a sudden, at the end of this tunnel, you begin to see a little light. 
that light continues to get bigger because obviously you're getting closer to it. But all of a sudden, you know, you're having one of these bullet trains coming out. We're taking old technology and now we're bringing in the latest and greatest technology available to our students. We've come a long way since the illustration of the train, but it was important to gain a visual understanding of where we were and where we needed to be. 21st century learning is a title we've given to the way our students learn today. Digital devices with the world at their fingertips anytime, anywhere, were now a part of today's classroom at Westlaco ISD. When Dr. Alejandro became superintendent in June of 2012, he understood that our students didn't learn the same way their parents learn. And while the district chose not to make the investment of buying iPads for all students, we instead initiated a BYOD philosophy, bring your own device. With the popularity of smartphones and the internet connection, personal cell phones became instructional tools in the classroom. And if a student owned their own iPad, Nook, or laptop, they could bring any of their devices to school, connect to Wi-Fi on campus, and immediately engage. Dr. Alejandro made this possible by securing the necessary funds to add more wireless network capacity at our schools. Once a 21st century vision was identified, the district then invested time in evaluating the level of technology at all campuses by literally walking into the classrooms at all of our schools and assessing the technology needs of each teacher. The district then invested in software programs that would enhance learning in the classrooms, programs like Lodi, Edmodo, Moodle, Flipped and Blended Learning, Google Docs, Digital Storytelling, and much, much more. Additional reinforcement came in the form of staff development through a series of Tech Day conferences. The first one in August, then again in October, followed by the one in November of 2013. The administration felt that if they were expecting more from teachers, they had to first provide more support and training. The support and training is provided through a core set of trainers who are specially trained in software devices and pedagogy used to support the district's vision. These experts not only provided training in August, October, and November, but also continued to be available throughout the school year to support staff members who may have needed additional assistance with 21st century learning. The vision was not expected to be an overnight success, but there was still no time to waste. If a student is used to using you know, a Chromebook, if they're using Kindles, if they're using iPads at home, but then they go back to the 19th century as far as instruction, there's a huge disconnect. So our culture of education must match the culture that our students are living in so that they can take it and move forward. If they're not moving forward, we're holding them back. And if you think about it, th think about how school used to be. You used to have to go to school to get information because where the encyclopedias and the books were. Well, now information is everywhere. So a student might have, a, have their interest peaked on a certain topic. They might go Google it at home and research, research, research and come into a class with a level of expertise far above anyone else in the room. We should encourage that. Let, let students bring in their information. Let them be, be teachers or, or co-teachers because that's how it works in the real world. The culture of the classroom, the dynamics of teaching and the structure and organization of the learning environment had to be different and it had to start from the top. I wanted to go viral, I want everybody to jump on the bandwagon and say you know. Immediately after Dr. Alejandro was officially named superintendent, he directed the production of a four-part video series. The series was intended to first lay out a floor plan. Administrators, teachers, students, and their parents had to understand the superintendent's meaning behind the vision. They needed to see the illustration of the slow-moving steam engine train transforming into a high-speed bullet train. The underlining message of this visual was, get on the fast-moving train or get left behind. The illustration was symbolic of our educational system. We had to transform classrooms from the traditional learning environment of teachers lecturing from the front of the class while students sat in rows to today's classroom where teachers facilitate learning where energy and a kind of controlled movement about the classroom and excitement are a must for today's students with shorter attention spans, and where student input, collaboration, and involvement were now a more important part of the teacher's lesson plans. If there's a parent that comes into my classroom and sees that my students are talking and, uh, you know, communicating 
in little groups, uh, they would be surprised. It's like, this is not how it was when we were back in school. And with a little bit of explaining, they would understand. If they ask the students, they're highly engaged, teaching each other, working. Uh, it is a different, it is a, cult, a, a shock when they come in and they see that the kids are, are moving around, you know, doing different activities loud. But noticing and asking questions, they'll be able, once they're in there, they'll be able to know that they're all engaged. The second part of the video series was about the implementation of the vision. The video featured a dozen or more examples of teachers embracing the use of technology in the classroom applying group learning methods, project-based learning, and out-of-the-box instruction. It was easy to see the engagement of the students, the excitement of the teachers, and the vision coming to life. Part three of the four-part series was to find out if the vision was working. It was called the Assessment and Evaluation Video and included interviews with students, teachers, parents, counselors, and administrators. Some of the comments made by students were harsh and brutally honest, but true. There's different ways to teach besides talking and talking and talking. Like some kids literally fall asleep in the classrooms because our teacher, is, she doesn't know when to stop. Like once she repeats the direction, she's like, okay, let's go over this third time. And we understand <laughs> it the first time. And I'm like, ugh. Then I, I really just start daydreaming. And I, I always have like a different daydream every day. Pero esto es muy importante para que el niño practique su lectura en casa. The video showed how parents now realize their own limitations when it came to the use of technology and applauded the school district for implementing more of it into the classroom. But this is basically the future of education. The parental component is vital to the success of the 21st century vision. Teaching parents at home to contribute to their child's success is the work and obligation of the district's parental involvement and community services department. And Tech Day conferences have been an important part of their development. In the fall of this year, hundreds of parents attended the first ever Tech Night community event, where students at their schools demonstrated the work that goes on in the classroom involving the use of technology. Parents were amazed at how the use of today's devices could improve their child's education. To some parents, these devices are foreign and even intimidating, so our district's parental involvement department set up training sessions to allow parents to become more comfortable and less threatened by the same tools our students use every day. For example, sessions on the district's new Myon Reading Initiative help parents learn how to log on and access a virtual library of over 4,000 digital books. That placed power in the hands of the parents that can now start reading to their children even before the child is born. I'd like to welcome you to the first ever WISD town hall meeting. The same level of excitement was seen as hundreds filled the rooms of the district's first town hall meeting held at the conference center at Knapp Medical Center. ...is to get them to be 21st century learners as quickly as possible so that they can be guaranteed the success that they deserve. The same type of town hall meeting occurred later that year where local businesses were the guests and high level discussions of how businesses could join in and contribute to the successes of 21st century learning. The teachers, especially those that had been teaching for many years, came to realize that changes needed to occur. And even though some of them admitted that transitioning was hard, they all agreed that if the student's education was at stake, it was a worthwhile change. The world has just, it's shrinking, you know, for them. You know, the way that they can access information, uh, particularly with the technology that they have, uh, it's a challenge to keep their interest, you know, if you're doing or preparing your lessons based on, you know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, technology has changed so much in this time that um, you, you really can't use, you know, lessons from two or three years ago anymore. Everything's changed so much. I feel that my teaching has just been turned on its head, it just this is my whole classroom, because um, you know, I, I feel motivated to try different things, you know, to, to try to get them engaged, and, and they're right there with me, and most of the times ahead of me, and teaching me to do, you know, certain things with technology. Administrators had seen learning trends come and go throughout their years of experience, but when it came to 21st century learning trends, they all agreed this was here to stay. It's everywhere. It's not a trend, it's everywhere. And that's what I keep telling the teachers. 
you know, I'm not going to change my mind. I'm still going to want you to do this. So, you know, get on the bandwagon so that we can all do what we need to do for the children. And um, I'm going to help you in any way I can. I'm going to provide what you need. Um, staff development is ongoing and they're okay with it because they know that I've bought in and they know that um, I wouldn't if I didn't feel like it was something good for the kids. The fourth video is still in the making. The concept behind the video is to bring major corporate leaders to Westlaco and have them talk directly to our students. We're looking for the Bill Gates, the Mark Zuckerbergs, and the Elon Musks of the world that can validate our reasons for changing the culture of learning. We're looking for people that can inspire our students to think in ways that our industry and economy demands. Problem solvers, adaptive critical thinkers, creative and innovative contributors are the skills that tomorrow's leaders will need. So as the fourth Vision video continues to seek and contact these top-notch innovators, the work of the Vision moves on. One thing that remains constant in Westlaco ISD is our ability to prepare all students to be highly successful in taking college entrance exams like the SAT and ACT. Staff works diligently in analyzing data and finding innovative ways to help students increase their SAT and ACT scores. We have partnered with the Sylvan Learning Center to provide assistance with this initiative. We have also opened up ACT and SAT preparation classes after school and on Saturdays. Go. Work, 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 work. Even our athletic department has been involved in preparing students and ensuring that all students sign up and take these required exams. Perfect, perfect. We have coaches following up with their athletes and requiring them to take these tests and improve their scores. Hey, this is a good group. Doing well in these tests means everything to a college-bound student. Scholarship opportunities, getting into the best schools and an added level of prestige is what's at stake for our students and the school district when we can say that a higher percentage of students in Westlaco take these tests than any other group of students in the Valley. Our students start practice testing SATs and ACTs as early as the seventh and eighth grades. And for years, the district has been recognized by Duke University for students that score exceptionally well, even at the middle school level. And that's the motivation behind preparing students early. The more times our students practice, the better they'll perform when higher test scores really count during their junior and senior years. We talked about the Mayan reading program earlier in this broadcast, but studies have proven that good reading skills, their levels of reading comprehension and vocabulary are key components to improve test taking. So while the district has initiated a zero to three reading program, there is a direct correlation to better test taking skills at all grade levels. 21st century, right? Does everybody know the 21st remember? century sign? It's like this or All right. There are so many elements that contribute to successful test taking skills, and in the progressive mind of Dr. Alejandro, it starts at birth. The 0 to 3 Westlaco Reads Mayan program is at the base of the out of the box thinking by our superintendent, and this is how it works. As a child enters our school system as a pre K four year old student, the things they will learn in the first year of school will be things like numbers, the alphabet, shapes and sizes, structural and organizational skills like learning bell schedules for the start of class times, even the separation from parents and social skills. But imagine if all those skills were acquired before they came to school. Imagine if a child came to school and already knew how to read. 23 daycare centers, three Head Start programs, the city's public library, and our local hospitals have already bought into the Zero to Three initiative. Now let's fast forward to junior high. If students at the middle school grades were taking high school level courses like Algebra 2, English 1 and 2, or Biology, by the time they got to high school, even the more basic courses offered to students would at that point be more rigorous college level courses. And that's how Dr. Alejandro believes a high school to med school concept could become a reality. It would require an aggressive vertical alignment of content from pre-K to the 12th grade for all students to be able to earn a college degree while still in high school. And the superintendent's vision isn't far off the mark. Students are already graduating high school with an associate's degree. So if a child walks into school for the first time ever and knows how to read, knows how to think critically and problem solve, Earning a college degree at the age of 18 can be a reality. 
Dr. Alejandro has introductory meetings with people like Dr. Lionel Vela, who is a part of the UT Regional Advisory Health Center residency program and hopes to develop a curriculum where high school courses taught in Westlaco would be transferable towards the new medical school coming to the valley. And the district has already seen the Meditech simulator, which is the only one of its kind south of San Antonio. Our students are already getting the hands-on training that they normally wouldn't see until after high school. One of the primary requirements for getting into med school are high ACT and SAT scores in math and science. So Dr. Alejandro is at the early stages of implementing a program that better prepares students for post-secondary education. One of those programs is called the Harvard Math Teach Program. This program recruits Westlaco ISD teachers to participate in a graduate level work at Harvard University. So when these teachers come back from their rigorous training, it will be the same type of Harvard level instruction given to our students here in Westlaco. And perhaps the most exciting advantage coming to Westlaco ISD at the start of the next school year is what we are calling the WISD 21st Century Kate Early College High School. It's the first of its kind in the state where our students can receive their associate's degree while still in high school. What makes it the first of its kind are the career and technology education courses offered to our students, including diesel mechanics, precision manufacturing, and welding. Good morning, class of 2014. And finally, two major hands-on events where nearly 1,000 WISD seniors fill the district's Performing Arts Center to hear advice on financial aid, scholarship opportunities, and were registered to vote. The seniors heard from U.S. Congressman Filimon Vela, Texas Senator Eddie Lucio Jr., and State Representative Armando Mando Martinez. So as you can see, student achievement is at the base of all that we do at Westlaco ISD. The infusion of digital devices in the classroom, providing support to our teachers through staff development, empowering our parents, businesses, and community members to become invested partners, demonstrating our successes through promotional videos, and preparing our students for college and successful careers. These are only fragments of the things we do to achieve the ultimate goal of empowering 21st century learners. The next segment of our State of the District Address centers around maintaining financial stability and transparency. The funding of our schools, teacher salaries, and maintaining facilities goes hand in hand with our students' successes. Good clean schools, healthy and safe learning environments, and competitive salaries for employees comes at a cost. And yet Westlaco ISD is considered one of the most fiscally responsible and financially sound school districts in the Valley. One of the first accounts to mention is called a fund balance or better known as a rainy day fund. That's money set aside intended to cover employee salaries or other operating expenses for two to three months if for some reason the state couldn't meet its obligation to our school district. We allocated $500,000 from the 2012-2013 budget surplus to increase the fund balance to the current $15.5 million that we already have saved up. The current plan is to add $500,000 every year to the fund balance account until we reach a maximum of $20 million. Westlaco ISD has received TEA's exemplary ranking in the Financial Integrity Rating System of Texas known as FIRST for the last 11 years since the program was implemented. The exemplary ranking is the highest rating issued by the Texas Education Agency, and it means that Westlaco ISD is managing their financial resources to the highest state standards. It means that the instructional needs of our students are being met adequately, where the proper student to teacher ratios are in compliance, and it means that the financial management practices and decision-making procedures of our business office are in check with the state. An example of how well our district handled its finances was evident in 2011, when the Texas legislature implemented $5.4 billion in cuts to public school funding throughout the state. Westlaco ISD saw a loss of approximately $5.7 million in state funding cuts that year and an additional $1.7 million in cuts the year after. But the district did not make any reductions in staff in any other way other than through attrition. Those two years when schools across the state couldn't afford to pay teacher pay raises, Westlaco ISD was one of the few that did. In fact, our teacher salaries in comparison to other districts are among the top two districts in the Valley, and one of the main reasons why our teachers stay here in Westlaco. Another benefit to our employees is the free health and dental insurance and life insurance policy of $25,000 per employee. 
we have a very healthy uh, budget. Uh, our budgets are, are balanced. Uh, we have enough resources to provide our students with everything that they need and our staff with everything that they need. We've also provided, you know, the uh, the races that, that are very critical to our staff because in South, in South Texas we're one of the lowest uh, paid uh, areas in the nation. So consequently, you know, raises are important so that we, we can keep up with the cost of living. But as superintendent, I'm glad to report that we have a very healthy budget and it's balanced and that we can continue moving forth with all confidence that if anything happens, we will continue to be able to provide the very best for our students. It's not often that we consider the image of our school district as an important factor in the success of our schools. It used to be that attending our local public schools, sometimes right in our own neighborhoods, was automatic. There were no other choices. As the state continues to ease up on restrictions for what are called charter schools, now more than ever before, attending other schools, other than a student's home school, is occurring more often. That's why the image of our school district is important. Many of the schools that advertise and promote their charter schools like IDEA or South Texas ISD base much of their promotions on claims of a better education, higher academic standards, and fewer discipline problems. It's natural for a parent to want a better education for their child, and philosophically speaking, when a person hopes for the possibility of finding something better, that conclusion also means that they may see something wrong with what they already have. That is a harsh reality that all public schools face in the nation, and here in Westlaco, our superintendent, Dr. Ruben Alejandro, is working hard to improve the image of our Westlaco schools. He initiated the I Choose Westlaco campaign by assigning us here at K-West to produce a 30-second commercial that has aired on cable TV stations throughout the Rio Grande Valley. I have a choice. My education means a lot to me. So where I go to school counts. My parents want what's best for me. But I also want all that a traditional high school has to offer. I want teachers that'll help prepare me for college. I also want a well-rounded education. And that means getting involved. Things like band, sports, choir. There's so many things I can do outside of the classroom that can prepare me for life. I do have a choice in where I go to school. And I choose Westlaco. Westlaco ISD. The video features the involvement of more than just classroom instruction, but a well-rounded education where the high school experience included more choices in extracurricular activities, things you won't find in a charter school setting. We already mentioned the previous town hall meetings, developing partnerships with local businesses, the many tech day conferences for both teachers and parents, but all of these events give us the opportunity to not only promote our 21st century vision for students, three, two, one, but allow the community to see firsthand the amazing things our students do every day in our schools. We are currently looking at ways to feature successful alumni and wanting to bring them back to our schools as keynote speakers and presenters. It's a concept of recycling and renewing energy, using homegrown talents and skills as instructional resources to inspire our current students by showing them success stories of others that have gone before them. Some of our local business owners, doctors, lawyers, firefighters, and even many of our school administrators came from the very same neighborhoods our kids are growing up in today. Image building was also centered around visits from our local government officials. Since Dr. Alejandro has been superintendent, leaders like State Representative Armando Martinez and Terry Canales, as well as Senator Eddie Lucio Jr., have all visited Westlaco ISD. U.S. Congressman Filimon Vela has also visited three times. Mr. Williams, how are you doing? The state's highest position in education, the Commissioner of Education, Michael Williams, spent almost half a day here. Welcome, Mr. Abbott! And most recently, the state's Attorney General and gubernatorial candidate, Greg Abbott, unveiled his statewide plan for education at Sam Houston Elementary here in Westlaco, if elected governor. Based on my observation, uh, everything you're doing is right. Uh, it's stunning. Uh, I, the thing I like the most uh, is the incorporation of what I'll call technology-based tools, and, and, and a lot of different ones, you know, whether it be uh, from the, the iPads, the iTouch, to the, the computer terminals they were using. The kids are, are learning that. They, that is, uh, if nothing else, they're learning, if you would, real life skills about what they see at the grocery store or, uh, and, and are able to employ those types of techniques. 
These state and national decision makers have contacts beyond our comprehension. So when they visit our schools and see 21st Century Learning in Action, we believe they will spread the word about Westlaco ISD, and the good impression we make on them has greater implications beyond the levels of our own community. So that's why we selected groups, uh, uh, a representative from each uh, campus, so that we can have input, or that I can have input, and start taking a look at things. But it's what people think here at home that counts the most. Dr. Alejandro has initiated the feedback and support of students, parents, and teachers through advisory committees and meets separately with these groups monthly. Open conversations occurs at these meetings where some of the more basic and yet vital concerns are addressed. Each campus is represented at these group meetings and the hope is that what they learn while on the advisory committee can be taken back to their schools, talked about with their friends and shared among other parents. According to Dr. Alejandro, students, parents and teachers have a voice and a place in all decisions he makes as superintendent. There is a common cliche that says, perception is reality. So as we continue to rank among the highest academically achieving schools in the Valley and state, as we maintain some of the highest teacher salaries with fewer teachers leaving our district, as employee benefits, facility needs, and financial transparency is at the highest standard, as our graduates secure some of the top scholarships and are accepted into the, some of the best universities in the nation, as our list of credentials grow, it often comes down to the day-by-day -day experiences between our teachers and each unique and individual student. It comes down to how well our parents are treated when they visit our schools, and finally, it comes down to how well we promote our successes. The image of our schools is a powerful tool that reinforces growth, improvement, and success. So here we come down the stretch, it's Mercedes. There are so many ways to end a great story, especially when they have dramatic and emotional endings. Wow! <laughs> and there aren't many better ways to find great endings than in sports and competition. Touchdown Wildcats! Touchdown! When you drive by our many schools and see the words on our digital marquees that say District of Champions, it is our way of developing a culture of competitors and winners. A winning attitude can be taught and learned, and combined with a higher level of confidence, the term District of Champions is a reality in all that our students do. 20 and 0 with one draw. 17 KOs out of Westlake, Texas. Here he is, Omar. We are proud owners of a world championship title through one of our former Westlake East graduates, Omar Panterita Figueroa. He has already successfully defended his world title twice and continues to bring national recognition to Westlake. Our Panterita is well versed in the process of becoming a champion. Dr. Ruben Alejandro, he's our number one Panther and Wildcat fan. As we look back at the last two years Dr. Alejandro has been superintendent, we can see that just about every sport and competition that our students participate in have either won an outright district championship, advanced to regionals, area and state playoffs, or students in UIL academics or Kate competitions going all the way to nationals, Westlaco ISD students have competed successfully in all areas beyond the walls of our classrooms as well as outside the boundaries of our school district. I hope that this State of the District address gives you a clearer perspective of our goals and accomplishments over the past year. It has been my privilege to serve as your superintendent. This has by far been the most exciting time of my professional career and every day that I come to work and visit the classrooms, I am inspired by what I see. I see the engagement and excitement from our students. I see purpose and fulfillment in our teachers. I see more active parents and a community that are now stakeholders in the future of our children. It is true that I have aggressive goals for our students and that many of my goals are far reaching, but I would rather challenge our students to reach beyond their own expectations than to settle for less. The environment that they are growing into is highly competitive, and as educators, it is our obligation to prepare each one of our students to be ready. And I'm not just talking about this year's seniors, but about the future of children just entering our schools as well. The year 2025 sounds like a long time from now, but that's the year our first graders will be graduating high school. That's the year that space technology plans to colonize Mars, and in the meantime, a launch site may come to the valley as well as a medical school. 
I want our students to be the decision makers and the problem solvers for that level of technology coming to the Valley. That's what I mean when I say that we are preparing our students for jobs that don't exist today. And it's concepts of 21st century learning that will be the key to their preparation. Success in the 21st century requires knowing how to learn. You have heard me say many times that students today will likely have several careers in their lifetime. So they must develop strong critical thinking, problem solving, and interpersonal communication skills in order to be successful in an increasingly fluid, interconnected, and complex world. Technology allows for 24-7 access to information, constant social interaction, and easily created and shared digital content. In this setting, we educators can use technology to our advantage to create an engaging and personalized environment to meet the emerging educational needs of this generation. No longer does learning have to be one size fits all or confined to the classroom. The opportunities afforded by technology providing our students with a more global perspective should be used to reimagine a 21st century education, focusing on preparing students to be learners for life. This has been my vision and my message from even before becoming superintendent, and I believe in the vision wholeheartedly. So as we bring this school year to a close, as we send off another group of students into the world, let's hope that we have done our students right by preparing them right. And let's also look forward to next year to see how we can make it better. I am your superintendent, Dr. Ruben Alejandro, and this is the State of the District. Thank you for watching.